We are back with more Wireshark. Uh, still moving forward with the HT, or excuse me, the TCP stream as we move forward to uh, to kind of give you a more insight into what's going on. Uh, let's let's find out what's in the body of a message. All right, let's do that. Uh, again, we're gonna filter our traffic. We're just gonna do HTTP. Uh, I feel like I'm picking on this first one a lot. Let's drop down to something else. Let's go to this one. We're gonna do this git command on line 81 if you're following along. I'm gonna right click. We're gonna follow that TCP stream right there. And for this type of question, you may get a capture the flag question or some type of other question that asks you, what did the system do? What did the system provide? By looking at the information, we can see that there was a PNG in there. It provided some type of PNG, but what type of PNG? That is the question. If we scroll through the body of the quit of the question, body of the text, I should say, of all this information, we should be able to find something in here that gives us a hint of what was going on, of what was downloaded in the process. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that it was a bg.png that the client actually told us uh, within this process. Now, not always is it a beginning of the client. Sometimes it's going to be in this uh, this point, right? I wish we had some more plain text in here. I wish I had some plain text in here um, because I feel like that would give us the answer a little bit easier. Uh, usually, you don't have to search for it that often. You can usually find the the body of the message right here. This is all encrypted, so it gives a little bit more difficult. Uh, but it would identify what we're downloading right in the body of the server response. And go through that process uh, and that's what it would do we could also interesting thing let me show you something else we could also scroll down let me go through here you see how i have expanded the transmission control protocol we could see the sort the destination all that other good stuff if i scroll all the way down i can usually find this isn't a good one let's look up a server response there we go we can actually see portable network graphics that is a png if i expand on that I can see the image header, the text data. If I expand on that, I can see if there's actual textual data in there uh, for that PNG. I can see the image trailer, the data chunk. All this stuff is provided underneath. And now it's all under the HTTP, but it is interesting to see. Uh, and that provides us a little bit more data. We can also get things while I'm on the matter. We can also see if there was response down here. Now, for a, a response from the server from the segment pack, maybe we were talking about a segment link, we'd want to see how we have the arrow right there, the traffic, and this is the end of the traffic. So this segment right here, 81, it sent data from the client to the server. That's what the arrow means. And the last pack it sent, sometimes it's the next one. A lot of times it's quite a bit. Let me see if I can find a better example here. Let's see here. I want to find a good one. Let's, let's look for a git. I know, I'm going off on a tangent. Let me find a git. Oh, it's not going to let me. Let's go back to HTTP. There we go. Go back to HTTP. Here we go. Let's look for a git. This is a good one. Good as any other, right? Let's, this is a perfect one right here. All right, let's follow this. I'm just going to follow. If you're following along, I'm on line 50 on the practice. I'm going to follow the TCP stream and close that out. And you can see here, there's where the original traffic was sent. And there's the response. That's the last response. So if I click on that and I expanded my TCP, and if this packet of traffic, if this traffic had it, uh, it could actually provide us with the total of all the data sent, right? And it would provide us that in bytes. And it would be right here, right above, there it is, two reassembled segments. We could see the reassembled TCP segments. One was 2215, the 2215 bytes. We could see number 51 provided us 1448, and number 53 provided us 767. So I can see the reassembled TCP segments in this example, which is exactly what we were trying to do, right? So there we go. That's reassembled segments. Uh, but you have to click on the right one, right? And that's where it comes in. And it's going to be the one with the arrow returning. Not all of them have it. Not all of them have it, right? And that's why I was a little bit surprised. I got lucky. I got lucky is what I did. And if I expand that out, I can actually see frame 51 payload, 1448 bytes, and frame 53 payload, 767. And that's where I'm getting the different responses from. And then the total is 2215 bytes, right? So if I got asked the total for reassembled TCP bytes, I could be like, oh, it's 2215. If I got asked specifically about 
51, then I would know it's 1448. And then specifically for, port, uh, for frame 53, I would know that it's 767, right? So there you have it. That's, that's the next one uh, that I wanted to discuss. There you have it. All right, the next question you might get asked is if I, let's say that I wanted to go through and I wanted to find out how many total segments were sent by the server itself, not to the client, just from the server. Well, first thing I need to do within this, right? I've already followed the TCP stream is I would need to figure out which one is the server versus which one is the client. And we've already established that the client is sitting on 101 and that the server is sitting on 102. We did that in a previous video, if you don't remember. Now I just need to count how many packets were actually sent or segments were sent from the actual server. And to do this, it's actually quite simple. Uh, although it does have to actually count. I'm actually gonna take the source and I'm gonna change it to 102. And then I'm literally just gonna count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There were 17 segments in the PCAP file uh, associated with this stream that was sent from the server over to the client. And that's, that's the important part right now. What do you have to worry about? If you're in a CTF competition, make sure that your destination IP address matches the client they want you to send. Because otherwise you may get to where Wireshark is going, oh, where there's five different clients and you're starting to count, but the destination doesn't match. Uh, it doesn't, since we follow the TCP stream, it's not that big of a deal, but let's say that I didn't. Let's say I didn't follow the TCP stream. Let's say that I was just on Wireshark itself. Uh, let's just hit enter, right? Then I would have to go through and I'd be like, oh, well, 102, how many did it spin, da, 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 and then I'd start counting for 102, but if my destination changed. By following the TCP stream, I don't have to worry about that because it's going from one portion to the next, and so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but if you take a shortcut, if you take a shortcut, uh, you could end up into some trouble because you're not going to actually be answering the right questions. Remember, we want to follow that TCP stream as we're answering those types of questions. All right, let's let's talk about last modified next. Uh, when we're looking at a TCP stream, let me just grab one. I'm just going to grab this one right here. Let's go into TCP stream. There you go. Uh, oftentimes, we may get a question as to when when was it last modified? When when did this happen? Well, that's going to be in the server information, and we can see that right here. In this case, we see a PNG. Uh, I'll be honest, I picked this on purpose, right? So we just see this PNG, but we want to know when this was last modified. We can see the date that we picked it up, right? 25 June of 2024 uh, is when we picked this up. But when was this last modified? And that's that's the million dollar question. Uh, to figure that out, we're actually going to drop back down, close that out. We're going to go to the HTTP section, right? So we need to see the actual response for our get request. So I lost it now. Let me let me get my PNG. Let's do PNG. There we go. Uh, and here we can see that our initial portion right there, right uh, within that. Now we just need to get the response from the server. I can click on that right there. Here's my hyper transfer protocol. Let me drop on that one, and I should be able to see the last modified. And there it is, right there. Last modified on 8 June of 2010. Now, while we're in here, let's talk about content type. Now, content type is usually an A, an MX, maybe a PTR code associated with it. And we can find that on the server response. <coughs> in this particular case, we're looking at that PNG file. If I expand this hyper transfer protocol right there and I scroll down, I can see that I'm looking for content type. In this case, it's gonna be under content length. And here we can see content type. Now, because it's a PNG, uh, we're not getting one of the normal ones, but we are seeing a PNG forward slash R forward slash N, or I should say backslash R backslash N. Now, I wanted to take the time to actually show you some DNS traffic because we are definitely in that sphere. You can see DNS traffic all the way through here. If I go and I type in DNS, uh, it'll filter it by specific DNS services. Um, 
this is not available to you, I'm sorry, uh, but I wanted to showcase it just because I wanted to be able to safely provide this information online without it getting taken advantage of. Um, and so you can see these are all private IP addresses within my virtual environment, but it is possible to extrapolate some decent information out there that I don't wanna deal with. So you can see here that my system from Firefox made a request to unicornitems.com. And as part of that, the DNS is responding back and we can receive this, see this response on packet 77 because of the arrows telling us where it is. So if I click on the server response, I can then extrapolate information from that telling me where unicornitems.com is. Well, it's right here for starters. We can see unicornitems.com is at 107.180.51.21. It's in the information. It literally provides us to that. Uh, and that's one of the nice things that domain name systems provide us when we're going through it. If we expand the domain name system, we can actually look in here and we can see this is request number 74. We can see the time associated with it. We can look at queries. And here again, we can see unicorns.items.com. We also see that it is a type A or address and class IN. If I scroll up a little bit to the flags, we can hit the flags and we can see the different responses uh, from it. We can also scroll down a little bit and see the questions one, answered one, the authority, so on and so forth, all of which are items that you should be aware of if you're looking for it. If we look at the user datagram protocol, we can see that it came out on source port 53 and the destination port, but we already knew that because we have our Wireshark set up properly. If I hit that domain, or excuse me, that user datagram program, and I go down to uh, timestamp, we can see that the time since first frame, we can also see the time since previous frame, and we can see the UDP payload because DNS in this particular case is UDP, not TCP, not TCP. We can also see the length of 58. So all of this plays into uh, the role of understanding the information that DNS gives you as we're going through. Uh, if I scroll out on this Unicorns item type A, scrolling back over there, we can see the length, the label, and of course the host address associated with it. Um, so that's the main name systems when it comes down to a nutshell. I can also right click, and if you see follow, you'll notice that it's not TCP stream, it's UDP stream. And I can click on that. There's not a lot of information here, but there's some. We can see that the client requested unicornitems.com and the server of the DNS responded back with unicornitems.com. But it really didn't give us a lot of data uh, specifically with that because it is part of a DNS. So that is DNS. That is um, grabbing that information off of it. I think, I think next week we're going to do uh, the next one, right? So this was all. This was all TCP traffic. So we did HTTP, we did TCP, which was also kind of HTTP. Uh, but next week, I think we're gonna dive into a little bit more. We're gonna go more in line with the process. So uh, stay tuned. I hope this was educational. I hope you found it to be uh, profitable for your mindset. Profitable, I love that word. Uh, I hope you found it to be interesting. Uh, until next time, my name's Dr. K. We will see you again with a yet another Wireshark video next week. Thanks everyone. Take it easy.